G'day folks, Troy Dean here and welcome to another episode of the WP Elevation Podcast, the show where we help you start and grow your very own WordPress consulting business. And I'm very excited to have with me here our feature guest this week, Brian Jackson from Keenster Hosting. Hey Brian, thanks for being a part of the show. Hey, yeah, thanks for having me. Excited to be here. Now, uh, I've been a, a big fan of yours for a while. We have a mutual friend, Joe Howard from WP Buffs, who I think has tagged me and you in a couple of Facebook conversations over the last maybe year or so. Uh, he's pointed me to your blog a couple of times. I've been kind of sniffing around and stalking what you guys have been doing. Um, for the, so I wanna, I wanna dig into so much about what you're doing uh, there at Keenster Hosting. But for those that don't know, what is Keenster Hosting and how are you different to you know, the other 8,000 managed WordPress hosting companies on the planet, right? (laughs) Yeah, no, it is tough for now. I don't know how consumers do it nowadays, to be honest, to choose. Um, But I guess that's my job is I I have to help them choose. Um, But yeah, um, so, you know, Keen said we're premium managed WordPress hosting um, and we focus really on speed. We're really obsessed with speed. Uh, um, Can't stress that enough. And um, security, of course, is, is always important for us. Uh, and then high quality support. Um, support, we've actually, I like to say we kind of changed the game with support just because we don't have different level tiers of like reps like um, some of our competitors do. Um, we only hire um, WordPress developers and Linux engineers. Hmm. So anyone you talk to, like, they're gonna be using WordPress on a daily basis. Like a lot of our guys develop plugins, sell plugins, um, even contribute to core. Mm. So like you're, when you chat to a rep, you're gonna be talking to someone instantly that knows how to fix your problem. Mm. Um, and while, you know, we invest a lot more in support, um, but it, it has paid out um, for us over the long run, so. So there's a couple of things uh, I'm gonna challenge you on a couple of things here. One is how do you scale that? Cause I know, one of your competitors had a big problem at one point when they scaled. It's no secret. WP Engine got a lot of bad press and a lot of flack because they grew so quickly that their customer support, which was awesome when they first started out, kind of died and then they kind of had to rebuild. So how do you scale that or is do you deliberately scale it slowly? Yeah, and well, that's a, that's a good question actually too. And I, I, I myself even back, way back when was a WP Engine customer mm-hmm. myself even. Um, and uh, the the way we've done it is like Keenst is a 100% bootstrapped company. Wow. So, and it's actually one of the reasons I'm really happy to work at Keenst because it means we usually put the users first. Like we're built, everything is built on user feedback. Um, we don't have like investors and VC money you know, pulling the strings, you know, telling Mm. us, you know, we need to earn more money basically. Mm. So like you said, we can kind of grow at the pace we need to. Like if we're growing too fast, we can kind of slow that down. Mm. Um, And from day one, fortunately, our our CEO put the emphasis on the support thing as far as like not different tiers. So we've been doing that from day one, like going, we want to hire only the best of the best. And so over the years we've, you know, you kind of get a sense for, you know, how many tickets, you know, a support engineer can take. And for us, you know, it's a lot different than WP Engine where you have, you know, maybe level, the level one tier is, you know, taking all these first line requests mm. where, and their second tier is taking the more advanced requests. Mm. Our, our reps are taking simple requests all the way to, you know, complicated reverse proxy stuff or, you know, um, multi-site s- setup stuff, um, you know, everything from um, all sorts of requests. And so um, we've had to figure out how to scale that, um, mm. but I think we've done a good job at it. Um, but like you said, I think a big part of it is because we are, are bootstrapped. So we can kind of scale as we need to. And obviously we're trying to grow as fast as po- possible, obviously, yeah. but um, it's not like someone's handing us, you know, $25 million and saying go. Yeah, um, yeah. In my opinion, I think that's a bad idea. Yeah. Um, and uh, because you'll, you'll make a lot of decisions just to scale without actually thinking through yeah. what that's going to do for your business um, and just burn through the VC money as fast as you possibly can. Yeah. So, yeah, that's right. There's a difference between growing as fast as possible and as fast as profitable, isn't there? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. That's, that would be the very big difference there. Yeah. Um, um, so, uh, 
I'll come back to another thing I want to challenge you on. But you, so you, you said, you, said you, you know, if you if you if you want to kind of slow down growth, you can. But here you are on a podcast promoting Insta to a whole bunch of WordPress <laughs> consultants. So how do you slow down growth? Because I, you know, when your name came through on the run sheet here that you're going to be on the podcast, I was like, awesome, because I've been wanting to speak to you for quite some time because I'm really impressed with your content marketing strategies. You guys seem to be everywhere at the moment. How do you slow down growth if things are getting out of hand? Well, and that's, maybe that's not a good, I shouldn't have said that term, I guess, because sure. we are growing faster now than ever before. Yeah. Um, I think more people now know us. Um, I don't even consider us a brand yet, but that's where we want to be. You know, yeah. I can, you know, WP Engine, I think is a brand. Yeah. Like they were one of the first in the space yeah. and have been there for, I, I think over a decade now, like they were the first ones, yep. uh, no argument there. And so like they are a brand. Um, and so, you know, that's what we want to be. Um, and I think we're getting there. Um, and yeah, slowing down growth, I guess is not a good term, I guess, Managing. solving problems in a different way, mm -hmm. um, and figuring out how to scale as we go. Um, but again, we aren't ever going to go as fast as WP engine goes because of the money thing. Like we yeah. scale as we're profitable. Yeah. Um, and it's all based on, you know, how many signups we get in a month. Um, you know, how much we spend on our marketing budget, which directly relates to new sales, you know, so we can actually spend less on our marketing, which we've actually done. Mm. Um, we actually, um, I don't mind saying this, but we have the, um, this is one advantage of being bootstrapped during the holiday season to December, we actually cut our marketing budget back by 50% mm. because we actually wanted our support engineers yeah, to have more time have with their time, exactly. And, um, while we offer 27 four, seven support, yeah. you know, we still wanted everyone to have some more time, yeah. you know, just to spend with their families and stuff. That's something that you can't do if you're a VC funded company. Um, there's no, you just can't do that. That's so right. we have more control. Like if we want to slow down growth, we could technically, you know, just spend less on marketing. Um, I could stop writing every single evening <laughs> for yeah. a little bit. Yeah. Um, you know, there's lots of things we could do to slow our growth down if, if we needed to, but we are trying to grow as fast as possible. Yeah, and I think the the distinction is that it's not growth for growth's sake. Like if you do have VC money, you, you just like you have you have to grow, and sometimes it's at the expense of other things like user experience, customer support. So you guys yeah. are in a position where you're not growing for growth's sake; you're managing that growth and not sacrificing those other things along the way. Uh, quick sidebar, I do need to call something out. For those of you listening to this podcast, you may hear some rumbling in the background, and that is because we have some FA-18 fighter jets flying overhead, because in Melbourne this weekend, it is the Formula One Grand Prix. And during the Formula One Grand Prix, it is, which is the race is actually on Sunday, we're recording this on a Friday afternoon, during the Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, which is the Grand Prix Festival, there are Formula One cars racing around the city, and there are FA-18 fighter of jets flying overhead so if you hear the jets overhead i'm okay we're in no danger it's just a uh, display of our military power for all of our international guests um so the other thing i want to challenge you on is shout out for us australia yeah. <laughs> the other yeah. thing the other thing i want to challenge you on is you said uh you know i said okay how is how is keens to different uh you, you know you said you focus on speed security and and excellent customer support i'm i use hosting companies right we use a few we use wp engine and we use siteground they're our two main hosting companies sorry we don't use kinsta yet but that might change um but here's the thing when i go looking for a hosting company i never look for anyone who's slow vulnerable and has bad support right so so i as a consumer i go well of course you, you're going to be fast that's what i expect i expect it to be secure and i expect excellent support the point i'm trying to make here is consumer expectations i think are at an all-time high and i blame uber for that right because they've made it possible to like manifest a black hummer in like five minutes by pushing a button on your phone it's just ridiculous consumer expectations are so high how do you how do you draw how do you differentiate given that expectations are so high and things like security and backups and speed are just expected now well and two things i guess i want to say about that one thing is i always try to mention this on any any podcast that i'm on is i always encourage people to try hosts for themselves. Like don't even, don't even take my word for it. Like our, our churn rates under 5%. Wow. So I know we're, we know wow. we're doing something right. That's and so insane. that's, I always encourage people like 
please try Keensta because I, I promise you, you will see what we're doing that's different. Mm. Um, that's partially, partially one of the only ways you can really see yeah. is you'll see our custom dashboard that we built from the ground up. Um, you'll see the speed for yourself, like literally go test your site on Pingdom. We're not afraid for you to do that. Like go do it right after you move your site. Yeah. Um, and you will see all the difference and, you know, test our support, like open up our 24 seven live support is, you know, our, our, our average response time in 2018 across the board was under two minutes. Wow. A lot of times it's 20 to 30 seconds, but the average is under two minutes. Wow. So it's literally instantly. And you're talking with the developer, not just, not a robot. you know, you're not going to get passed around between different reps. Like, right. um, we're, um, the awesome thing, I can't talk enough about our support and I know it's just bragging now, but like, you know, we sure. have, we host huge companies. Like, um, we host buffers blog, um, like fresh books, uh, drift. Um, wow. Even Maria DB, which we actually use for databases. We actually host their website as well. Um, wow. So, you know, we host these companies and the same guys that are helping those clients, like our starter plan clients get to talk to those same support people. Wow. So, you know, it, the, the wealth of knowledge, I think that we, give people from our support team is just it's beyond what anyone else is doing and um, and just to be clear it's managed wordpress hosting right so i can't host php files on my account it's it's all wordpress yeah correct uh, we do have people that host like you know random html sites and stuff but um, uh, we only support wordpress sites so Got there it. Are, you can do a little a couple other things but you know you have to chat with our support to get those actually working because we're really optimized just for wordpress yeah got it um the other thing I would like to say, I guess, about how we're different is we were um, the first managed WordPress host to exclusively use Google Cloud Platform across the board. Um, other hosts have started using them now. WP Engine uses Google Cloud now. Flywheel uses Google Cloud now. Um, I think Pantheon just migrated some stuff to Google Cloud. But we were the first to actually say, hey, Google is is doing something here. You know, right. AWS was there for years. Yeah. Um, and Azure is still, I don't think anyone connects Azure with WordPress even nowadays still. No. Um, but that's we were a, the that's first a, one. That's a Microsoft take. product, isn't it too, Azure? It is, yeah. yeah. And you can host it, but no yeah. one no. connects the dots. Um, no. They have a ways to go, I think they're still. Yeah. Um, but, you know, we were the first, we migrated all the clients to Google Cloud in 2015. Wow. And we were the first managed WordPress host to take that leap because Google Cloud was still pretty new at that time. Mm. Um, but now, um, you know, they have um, 19 data centers. We just launched one actually two, data, two days ago in uh, Zurich, Switzerland. Hmm. Um, so you get to choose from 19 different spots. You can choose a different data center for each of your w WordPress sites. Wow. Um, and you get to, you know, pay back off of Google's network, which is... You know, I mean, one of the fastest networks in the world now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, all their stuff's backed by, you know, the same teams that build Gmail, build Google search. It's so, I mean, the yeah. wealth of knowledge behind Google Cloud, too, is just, yeah. I mean, one of the best in the world. Yeah. Um, uh, Google had a couple of problems this week, but then again, so did Facebook and Instagram. So, you know, <laughs> yeah. it actually, happens. I think the whole internet <laughs> yeah, that's had right. a problem this, it happens. this week. Yeah, that, it happens. that is for sure. Um, um, now, one thing I do want to talk about while I've got you here is your, what, first of all, what is your role? in in Kinsta. yeah so i'm uh the chief marketing officer so i do all the marketing stuff you see on twitter facebook you know any ads you see i'm doing that um, i'm in charge of all the content marketing mm -hmm. um, so all of our stuff on our blog um doing that i do all of our seo um, how much of it do you do and how much of it do you actually manage other people doing it our SEO, I do 100% wow. um, because even at this point, I do not want to outsource that. Yeah. We've grown very, very fast um, in terms of organic search and stuff. Yeah. And um, that's kind of my specialty. And so that's right. kind of one reason they brought me on to Keensta to begin with right. is because I, um, I'm pretty good at that. And mm. so um, we still haven't outsourced our SEO. We do outsource some of our content marketing, though. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I don't write everything anymore just because of obviously time yeah, constraints and stuff. Um, and yeah, that's one advice for any business. I think, you know, find some good writers. Like if you can find good writers, you're set. Like yeah. it's, it's hard, but, but yeah, 
Yeah. So here's where I want to pick your brain. Oh, by the way, if things don't work out with Kinster, you and I should totally talk. Um, <laughs> um, here's, here's, here's where I want to pick your brain. How do you – we've got a remote team, uh, various levels of understanding of SEO, various levels of experience. We've got uh, good writers, uh, you know, p- good people doing social media. H- how do you manage the process of – what, what's your flow? Like, how do you decide? First of all, first of all, let's take a step back. What is the point of you guys publishing an epic blog post of which you have many? Like your, your, your content is outstanding. Joe, Joe Howard from WP Buffs continues to point me to it. And over the you know last, I don't know, maybe six to nine months, I've found myself visiting your blog more and more. Uh, how do you decide what to publish? And then once you've made a decision that we're going to publish an article around this, then what's the flow, the workflow that you go through to actually make sure it gets published to the gold standard? Because that's where we're really struggling at the moment. I don't mind admitting it. We publish tons of content. I reckon most of it is kind of a bronze medal. Uh, Every now and then we publish something that's awesome. Uh, And it's just because there are so many moving parts, so much content, so many people in different locations, and we're really trying to streamline that workflow so that everyone understands this is why we do it and this is what it looks like when it's done correctly. Yeah, no, I, yeah, let me go. I can go through our our workflow. Um, And also to backpedal just a little bit, I shouldn't say I'm the only one doing SEO. We do have a couple of people in at Keensta like that reach out for guest posts and like, um, you know, might say like, you know, can you mention us here? We see you did our, you know, review about our other competitor. Like, do you want, do you know about Keats? So we do have a couple of people doing that stuff. I'm not the only one doing that. Um, but as far as like on site, yeah. like optimization, I'm the only one doing it. Um, so our workflow really, I, I literally live in Trello. Mm-hmm. Um, can't speak good enough about Trello. Um, and, Basically, any any of the outsourcing for writers we do, basically they have their own Trello board mm-hmm. um, that we push push ideas to. Um, I'm constantly looking for ideas. It's something I've never had a problem coming up with. I don't know if that's something you do. I know a mm-hmm. lot of people seem to do have a problem with that. Um, I One advice, I guess, if you have trouble coming up with ideas is make a Slack RSS feed channel for yourself or you know, subscribe via emails if you want, however you want to do it, but go to your, all your competitors of people that you like their content mm. and just make an RSS feed of all their stuff mm. and watch what they're publishing and then figure out how to do it better. Basically. Mm. Um, that would be my best advice. Um, a lot of the stuff we publish is actually stuff I'm learning how to do. Or I'm currently working on. So I would say a lot of it's just, you know, I learned something and then we publish how to do it for other people to learn. Yeah. Um, that, that, and that's how I've always blogged. I've been blogging for like, probably over 12 years and I've always done it that way. I think yeah. tutorials are, people just love tutorials. Google loves, you know, ranking tutorials higher because of, you know, click through rates and stuff for people finding stuff. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, once you have the, have content ideas, um, you know, getting a workflow, um, we use Trello, I would say get on there, um, get some writers on their own Trello boards in there. Mm-hmm. Like we have different columns for like, here's ideas. Um, and then we let the writers kind of say, you know, the sun's going to the in progress um, column now, and then they get work on it, um, and then they move it to the finished column. And then like I might take that and then actually move it to my own board, hmm. and then it actually goes to an in progress column in my board hmm. because I never let anything go out without me touching touching it basically hmm. um, and doing editing, and I, I I add my own stuff to and all sorts of stuff. Um, and then it goes into an editing thing, um, and then I finally go to the publishing stage. Um, I know for a lot of people, it that sounds like a lot of work, and I'm not going to lie, it is a mm. lot of work. Mm. Um, you know, like six different steps just to get one blog post published. Mm. Um, and that's after you have to find the writer, <laughs> too. Yeah. Um, but I, I think if you don't have the workflow in place, the scaling your content marketing is just going to be impossible. Totally. Um, this is exactly our problem at the moment, yeah. I... I, I, you know, obviously when we started out too, our workflow wasn't that great either. And we had to kind of learn as we went and now, yeah, we have, you know, different boards and it is, there's a lot in our Trello. Like it's, you look at it and like, you almost want to have a panic attack. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like, we, but, we use a sign on, it's the same thing. Every time I open it, I'm just like, okay. ah, <laughs> yeah, like go to the pub instead. Ignore how many things there are. Yeah. And 
just keep going consistently. Um, consistency is a, a, another big thing. Do you have a calendar? Um, do, you, do you have like a calendar like, okay, uh, this, like a blog post has to get published Wednesday the 17th of March regardless? Um, we I, The calendar is really in my brain, oh. um, but it's we try to publish three blog posts per week. Mm-hmm. And we pretty much hit that 100% of the time. Right. Um, part of that's also because of our newsletter. I always want, I have a certain number of blocks, you know, in a newsletter I need to fill. Mm. So I kind of want to always have three new pieces of content there. Um, hmm. And, you know, I try to squeeze new knowledge base articles in between that stuff too. So that's even crazy. That's another workflow altogether. Um, but yeah, three pieces of content. So it, it's not a lot. I mean, yeah. I, maybe that is a lot for some people. I, I don't think that's a lot, but we try to do just high quality stuff. So, you know, anything we publish is, we don't publish anything under 2000 words. It's 2000 words and up. Um, a lot of times our stuff will go into the five to 6,000 words. Um, and you know, once a quarter I'll, I'll do some massive, we just published a speed up WordPress guide, um, that we turned into a book and that's over 25,000 words. Wow. So who wrote that? Um, I, I, I actually wrote that myself. Wow. Um, and so I'm, I'm actually really proud of that, but it's stuff I don't get to do all the time anymore. And I, I love writing. So I was really happy to, to, to do that because yeah. of the project. <clears throat> I did um, mention before that if things don't work out with Kinster that you and I should chat, I did mention that. <laughs> okay. Tonight. Yeah. I'll make it, I'll make a note of that. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, I love writing and I actually wish I could do it more than, uh, the more we grow and stuff, you know, my chief marketing role has changed a lot uh, than it used to, uh, when it started out. Yeah. Um, I do a lot of, you know, putting out fires and, you know, calming stuff down in Slack and, you know, all sorts of stuff that, you know, how it goes yep. when stuff grows. So, um, and that's, I think another key reason why you have to find writers, you have to find people to work with. Um, and it is hard. Um, but we have a couple people on our partners page that like we use for writers that, you know, you're free to go on there and actually see who we're using for some of our stuff. I don't, care yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I, i'd rather share good content writers with people mm. because i feel um you know there's there's enough work for everyone to go around yeah 100 um and i'd rather there be good content on the internet than yeah totally. more 400 word articles that that aren't helping anyone yeah sorry um, sorry about those sorry <clears throat> <laughs> um so yeah i yeah finding the writers the workflow um and then yeah as far as seo goes you know, I'm really obsessed with that. I, I'm a technical person, though, so I actually track keyword rankings. Mm-hmm. Um, and what do you, you know, use some people to track say rankings? Keywords are dead. I don't think that's true at all. I don't but think they're still, dead. Just, no. still use right for the user. But I, I always yeah. say write smarter, not harder. So why can't you do both? Yeah, correct. And do you, do you have um, like do you have a tech stack that you use for keyword ranking? Um, yeah, we use AccuRanker uh-huh. um, to keep track. Um, they're great. We've used them. Um, I used to work at KeyCDN. It's a content delivery network before Keysta, yeah. and uh, we used them there. And then I started using them day one at Keysta. I was like, guys, we got to sign up for Anki Riker. So we signed up. And so I've been using them for years, actually. Um, cool. But yeah, great tool. They One really great thing about their tool that's different than a lot of the other ones that's actually crucial for, I think, content marketers is they let you refresh the keyword rankings instantly. Huh. So you can go... A lot of people don't know this and Google might not want you to know this, but they've said it publicly before is when you publish or update a big piece of content, you can go submit the URL back in Google search console and have it crawl it again. Um, Google is actually fast. It will crawl it instantly. And if you've added another 600 words, your ranking in SERPs will actually change almost instantly. Wow. Um, and you can almost instantly see the work that you just did wow. and how it affected your rankings. Wow. So a lot of people don't know that, but then, so what I do is say I, this post is old and I go update it with, you know, 600 or a thousand more words. I can go submit it Google search console. And then maybe an hour later, I'll pop into AccuRank, hit refresh keyword rankings and immediately see kind of the effect that that had on the post. Mm. Um, and then another way you can do that is um, if you hit like the front page of Reddit, or something that where something goes mini viral or really big viral, or like on um, Y Combinator or something too, it's another big one. Um, that is directly related to SERPs. I've seen ha- 
hundreds of times. Like if you go viral, your rankings on SERPs will just instantly mm. spike. Um, it, it, so you can use AccuRanker too. Again, like watch actually how it correlates, and over time you'll you'll figure out these little tricks that correlate to higher rankings. AccuRanker. We'll put a link to AccuRanker in the show notes here. It's A double C U Ranker, which I'm assuming is a kind of an abbreviation of Accurate Ranker, right? Um, do you have checklists? Oh, but, but sorry, uh, two things. How do you get something on the first page of Reddit or Y Combinator? I mean, that's just a fluke, isn't it? Or is it outreach? That is a lot harder than it used to be, I'll be yeah, honest. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I'll be even honest, you know, I I don't do anything black hat. SEO, you know, I, I do everything the way you should do it. Yeah. But I will admit I have sometimes tried to submit things to Reddit when I shouldn't. Yeah. <laughs> and so I will admit my accounts are probably watched yeah. by now. And I have a lot of hard time submitting anything there anymore. Yeah, yeah. So... Really, and, and their Reddit is very like you know how Reddit goes like you would just get destroyed on there like yeah. um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. there's a lot of hate on there. Um, same with Y Combinator, um, but I, the way I advise people to do it um, because if you try to submit your own stuff, you'll just get flagged and and it'll be impossible to submit anything any ever again. You have to create like just amazing content that other people will share. Mm. I know people don't like to hear that because like, well, how do I do that? Mm. And, um, but that's really, I think the, the best way to get on there. Mm. Um, and I would say though, like we have Y Combinator and Reddit share buttons on our blog posts. So like <laughs> I would actually say, add those, if you want to hit those mm. front pages, like don't just do Facebook and Twitter buttons, like actually, actually add the other ones that actually can go crazy. Like if you just get one good Reddit share, man, it can give you, you know, 20,000 visits in one day, like wow. just one good share. So, wow. um, what, what, yeah. uh, what plugin do you use to add those, uh, Reddit and Y Combinator buttons to your blog? Um, we actually use, uh, it's easy social share. Uh -huh. Um, yep. and it, it is actually one of the, we're, uh, we don't like to use a lot of plugins and we actually write a lot of our stuff ourselves mm. and it is one of the more bigger plugins out there, but you can, if you, you can tweak it to actually dump or bring it down. So it's not loading tons yeah, of yeah. crap basically. Yeah. 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 Um, so, but that was one we use and it does have a lot of options where you can customize it be like, you know, I want these additional networks that, you know, maybe a lot of these other lightweight social plugins don't have. Yeah. Um, or something like that. Yeah. Um, but and it has a lot of customization for if you have a lot of custom stuff on your site. Where we do, we have custom post types, all these you know crazy stuff going on. So. Yeah, yeah. Uh, two quick questions. Do you have a checklist in Trello that says, okay, this is due to be published. Uh, it now has to go through this on-site SEO optimization checklist before we hit the publish button? So I do assign dates on my Trello cards. Mm -hmm. um, so like when something goes from, um, when something's done in the in in progress column, it goes to a holding column called ready or review. Mm -hmm. And then I, it has an, a date assigned to it that it's scheduled to go out basically. Um, and before I move it to the ready column, I do actually all the SEO before it goes to the ready. Mm -hmm. So like I've gone through it myself. Um, I've, you know, add interlinks to other, you know, related articles on our site. Yep. Um, you know, I do stuff like all the images, all the image file names should be named something well, not mm -hmm. just like random numbers. Yeah, IMG um, 73 dot IMG. <laughs> exactly, PNG, yeah. yeah. All that stuff matters. Um, like all the images, you know, should be optimized. I try to keep every single image under 100 kilobytes. Like yeah. that's kind of my golden rule. Yeah. Do you, um, do you optimize them before you load up or do you use something like the, uh, the image squishes in WordPress to do it? Yeah, we, we use a Magify. Uh -huh. on our site oh yeah um and so it works great but you know there's a lot of actually great image optimization plugins out there yeah um but i would say if you do use one please use one that just optimizes the images on their servers not your host mm. uh, you'll see a lot better performance that way and imagify uh short pixel uh i think the smush from uh wp mu dev yeah you know all, they all optimize on their own servers which is great so, yeah um, um and then Another thing too in Trello is power ups. I don't know if you've ever oh, used a Trello power up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but there's some cool ones. There's these custom fields, uh -huh. and you can. I actually use the custom field power up to add keywords for each Trello card. So while I don't go, ba I don't go back and add keywords to a blog post, but I keep a keyword in mind. Like as I'm writing, like this is what it should be about. Just to, as I write to kind of know 
you know, that's what it is. Um, and so I'll use the custom field thing and I have, it, you can actually name it. So like it says keyword one, keyword two, and I'll go put in keywords for each Trello card basically. Um, in Trello, do you have, uh, we use Asana, right? <clears throat> and I have a love, okay, yeah. love, love, hate relationship with it. And if I was starting again from scratch, I'd probably go all in on Trello, but I'm not going to win that war here um, because we're so far in bed with Asana, it's not funny. But in Trello, if I say, all right, this is now ready for review, can that automatically trigger a bunch of checklists? Like, how do you remember what the, the question is? How do you remember what to do with the on page optimization? Is that just a separate checklist you've got or is that on the Trello card? Um, that's in my brain. Ah, uh, yeah, got <laughs> um, it. Just because okay. I've done it for so long. Yeah. But I mean, if you go to our blog, we have a, it's like a forty-five plus checklist. It's a huge. I think it's like a, it's like a eighteen thousand word blog post right. of a checklist of what you should do. And I wrote that one myself of got like it. what I do on each blog post. So right. like, I mean, we sh I share everything that I do on each blog post in, yeah. in our blog post. Perfect. So, so what's the name um, of that blog post? Uh, it's WordPress SEO checklist. Right, WordPress um, SEO checklist at the Kinsta blog. We'll put a link to that in yeah. the show notes too. I'm yeah. I'm I'm calling these links out because I want Maddie, who does our content and social up on the Gold Coast here. I want her to listen to this podcast. If you're listening, Maddie, I want you to listen to this podcast, and I want you to go read that blog post that I'm mentioning. It's the WordPress SEO checklist on the Kinsta blog, written by Brian Jackson. Go check it out. Um, yep. That's actually why we. Has Oh, go ahead. I was yeah. going to say, that's why we do a podcast here, so that I can get free consulting from genius people like you and then pass that consulting on to the rest of the team. The fact that we publish it as a podcast is just a byproduct, really. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I see. I see uh, the reason I'm doing this is to get some free <laughs> That's right. For Kista, so Correct. It's like a win-win. Oh, absolutely. 100%. Hopefully, the audience yeah. learns something in the process. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, in the, in the post, I try to share, you know, some... Like there's beginner stuff, but there's also some advanced stuff that, you know, like use AccuRanker. Like I share tools that like, you know, just, you know, I've done this for over a decade. Like yeah. just use this tool. Don't, yeah. don't bother searching and wasting time finding other tools. Just, yep. I'm not going to say like, just take my word for it, but like I've spent <laughs> the hundreds and thousands of hours, yeah, yeah. blood, sweat and tears. Like if you want to speed up the process, just go through this blog. Yeah. Post. Yeah. hundred percent. I'm not going to say, trust me, but just trust me for God's sake. I've done this. <laughs> yeah, it works. Yeah. Um, no, when I say blood, sweat and tears, I literally mean that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been through it. Um, so uh, do you do keyword research? So you've got an idea for a a blog post. This this is this is the dance that I always do. I've got an idea for a blog post. I go do some keyword research. I find I realize that no one's searching for it. So then I, d I just go, well, let's let's you know, do we publish it or do we not? What's the kind of the rule of thumb there? That's actually another post I have coming up in the queue. Is like how to. It's going to be kind of like a how to how I do keyword research mm -hmm. um, from the start to beginning process. Mm -hmm. Is kind of what I have envisioned in my head. Um, and it's because a lot of people have asked me that exact same question because they might know what I do to a blog post, but how do you decide, like, should you do that blog post? Yeah. Um, like, and maybe you see a competitor that has an awesome blog post. Like, it doesn't mean you should even write about that just mm. because they did, because maybe they don't know what they're doing. Um, That's right. So, um, so what we use hrefs um, mm -hmm. for that. Um, you can use, you know, KW Finder is a great cheap one if you, if you need a cheap keyword research tool um zemrush obviously another one too but i i love hrefs i've used it for years mm -hmm. they have the best data in my opinion mm -hmm. um it's not cheap but mm -hmm. it's the best i think mm -hmm. um and so say you see a competitor's blog post that you like and like hey i i think i could write this better or i want to do the same thing on my own company's blog um you can literally you know put their url in hrefs and see which keywords they're ranking for mm. um and if it is at all um, so after you look at that, you can be like, oh, it's <laughs> ranking okay for this keyword. You can then take that keyword and go to another section in their tool where you can actually look up the keyword individually and see how much search volume per month is around that keyword. Yeah. So, you know, like a good example is like, maybe it's a, how to, um, install WordPress, you know, 101. Mm -hmm. And like the keyword is maybe like install WordPress. So. Mm -hmm. You know, you go put that into hrefs and see like, oh, there's, you know, maybe 15,000 people searches, you know, search for how to how to install WordPress um, a month. Um, or, you know, a lot of times I this is why keyword research is so important, though, still, because a lot of times you'll find things that you thought had volume don't and mm. then the opposite. Mm. And so if you think something is a is an awesome idea and I've done this a lot, like. I was like, oh, I, I want to write about this. I know a lot about this topic. And I go 
to Ahrefs, I tried different keyword variants and I realized nobody's searching for this. Yeah. <laughs> so at that point, I actually make the decision usually not to even write the blog post. Yeah. Um, once in a while, we'll publish something literally just for the user. But I would say 99% of the time, if there's not search volume, we we honestly don't yeah. publish anything. What's the point? Um, yeah. And it's because we've we've really honestly built our, you know, a lot of hints to on content marketing. Like yeah. that's been a big part of our success. Um, and so it, like we have to be smart. Another, you know, being bootstrapped too, we obviously have to be smart. We don't we don't have huge marketing budgets. Yeah. Um, so um, we have to have things that you know have good search volume and that we can work on over time. That's another thing I would say, like, don't be afraid if you're in it for the long haul, don't be afraid to go after keywords you think you might never be able to get. Mm. Um, I would say, you know, get something ranking for the keyword and then like keep adding to it, keep improving it. Like maybe, um, add a YouTube video about it, add that to the blog post, mm. all that stuff starts adding up over time and mm. you can keep improving the rankings for your blog posts over time. So yeah. just because you don't rank for it day one, doesn't mean you shouldn't try for it either. Yeah. Um, I, I get a technical question about updating posts. I've spoken to Yoast about this. Sure. When you update a post, do you change the publish date? And <laughs> and if so, if you're using the year in your URL, doesn't that kind of screw you up? Um, yeah, so two things on that. I do not advise using the year, the year in your mm. URL at all. Damn. If you have... I honestly would actually take the time to go back at 301 and go back to the short URLs. Wow. Um, so just I've seen, domain name slash post name. Uh, yeah. Now, yeah. to be fair, 301s will retain, you know, probably a good 95% of your traffic, but you mm. might see a little dip for a while, even yep. with 301s, <clears throat> just because changing things like that yeah. is still changing things. Yeah. Um, so I uh, don't want to get anyone in trouble if they just do this across their whole site. Yeah. Um, but I would, if it was me, I would literally go back, do the time, take the time, add three or ones for those posts, and make them short URLs because mm -hmm. short URLs are just better. Yeah. Uh, Google likes short URLs. I've seen long ones and short ones with similar content and similar domain authority and all stuff, and the short ones just always are the mm -hmm. ones ranking higher. Yeah. Um, so, um, and then you also have the ability to do more changes, like you said, um, with the year in there. First of all, it just looks bad if yeah, if you're updating totally. it and they see you know, 2015 Correct. in there, but you're still updating it for 2019. Yeah. Like that, that doesn't we, make sense. We, um, we literally just did that this week on a post about selling WordPress maintenance plans. Literally the year is 2014. It's still an epic blog post and still current, but it's got okay. 2014 in the URL. I'm like, oh, this has got to be a problem. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Again, I, okay. I, I yep. would. <clears throat> Maddie, you know, I hope you're listening. Time. Maddie, we're going to yeah. do 301 redirects on all those blog posts <laughs> yeah. that are actually bringing or, in traffic. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> And uh, <laughs> sorry, Maddie. <laughs> yeah, no, that's okay. It's fine. Um, that's I don't know how many blog posts you have, but that might be a lot of work. Um, yeah. It, so, and then changing the date itself. Um, I've actually seen this is something I've actually played with a lot over the years because I've actually wondered this myself. Mm. Um, like, how does it affect Google? And, you know, is it bad or is it good? Like, and I will honestly say I change blog post dates all the time mm. now. I didn't used to because I used to be afraid that it might actually hurt me or Google might think I'm trying to game the system or something. Yeah. Um, Google doesn't care, especially if you're adding content. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, Google's yeah. not stupid. And like if they're crawling and seeing a new date along with more content, yeah. like it, it's organic. You know, it's natural, right? It's like you said, like if you add a YouTube video or add an episode, add like an episode of a podcast that's relevant and you add yeah. like the show notes of that podcast to an existing post that was ranking pretty well, it's updated. Yeah. So update the publish date. Yep. Update the date. I actually yeah. just literally did one this week. We Got did it. a rewrite of a post from like 2016 that yeah. was you know an awesome post. Mm. And um, I looked at the current rankings for it. You know, it was like second page of Google. So I was like, hey, we can get on the first page. We just go do a rewrite of this. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, we change the date. Mm. It goes to the top of our blog again. It goes, we, you know, start resharing it again. Um, yeah. In our My yeah. to dashboard, we have this blog feed where, so it hits there. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of people have, when you put it at the top again, you know, a lot of other mm. things happen usually mm. on WordPress blogs. Yeah. You know, it gets shared, it gets RSS feeds, newsletters. Yeah. Yeah. Um, as long as you're not so, just like yeah, I, changing the post and, and, and writing the first sentence, update, this is still really cool, and then changing the publish date. Like no, you've yeah. actually got to update the thing, right? 
Yeah, yeah, and yeah. then do like all the promotion stuff that you you know did mm. when you originally wrote it. Like yeah. you know, go to Twitter, share it again. Like do all the stuff um, that you originally did to promote it again. Mm. Um, if it's better, like people will want to read it again. So. Yeah. Um, hey, this has been epic. I'm I'm uh, conscious of your time and the listeners' time as well. But uh, two quick questions before we wrap up. One is just on that. That was w- one question I wanted to ask. Is w- once the thing has been published. What is the promotional? Is there a promotional strategy like checklist to public to promote the article now that it's been published? Um, you know that's another good idea for a blog post. Yeah, it's a great <laughs> idea for a blog post. Yeah, yeah I feel like yeah. I'll just do another one-on-one guide on that. Yeah, for awesome. That'd be great. What Thanks. I do I'd really appreciate it. Yeah, <laughs> I'll give it to Maddie. He'd be great. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I, that's kind of uh, Tom, our CFO mm-hmm. now is. Um, he was one of the original founders of Keensta and he did kind of the marketing stuff before I joined the team. I joined when there were like six or seven of them. Um, mm. and now we have over 50 people. So it's, um, he used to do kind of my job and then I came on, but he still helps me a lot because he kind of likes doing that stuff. Mm. Um, and to be honest, I don't think his job is, is that exciting. <laughs> um, so yeah, and if you like Twitter and, you know, marketing and stuff, it's hard to get away from it. It's kind of addicting. Yeah. Um, but he helps me with some of that stuff, but you know, we, you know, when we publish a blog post, you know, um, I highly recommend like going on Facebook and spending a few marketing dollars on actually, um, I actually don't recommend ever hitting that boost button, mm-hmm. like actually make an ad. Yeah of your Facebook books because then you can actually customize audiences and do, yeah. I mean, a lot of more stuff than just when you hit that boost thing. I think I've seen so many people do that and yeah, they don't customize anything. I think it's just going to do stuff. Yeah, um, yeah. But, you know, take, you know, a good 30 minutes and go customize a Facebook ad for it, go to Twitter and do the exact same thing. Um, tw- it depends, you know, what your audience is on. I know a lot of people have great success on Pinterest. Um, Pinterest for our space, I've never had great success on there. I, yeah, I, I kudos to whoever is getting mm. stuff on Pinterest. I've never figured it out. WordPress stuff seems to do great on Twitter and Facebook mm. for me. So mm. I've, I've primarily stuck to those channels. Yeah. Do you, um, do you actually run the ads yourself? And so I do a lot of the ads, but we do outsource, um, some of that now to a, um, an agency. Yeah. Um, and they're actually on our partner's page too, cause we love them. And, yeah. uh, I, you know, we send our clients that are, you need that help too. Yeah. To go, you know, advise them to use people. Um, but I do actually the individual, um, article promotions. I actually still do those ads just because it's too much work. Yeah. Flow stuff back and forth between the agency and me to when I publish, so I, you know, sometimes I'll publish stuff at, you know, you know, 4am and I yeah. want to do the ads like right after that. So it's just, yeah. yeah. Um, and you run like a seven day campaign to for ads for that article yeah, on Facebook. It, it's usually about a week. <clears throat> That's yeah. what I do. Usually um, five days. I usually actually don't run stuff over the weekends mm-hmm. um, just because I've usually haven't seen great success. Um, mm. Again, I think that's industry based. Mm. I think, for some reason, you would think people want to sign up for WordPress hosts on the weekend. Mm. That's not true. They want mm. to sign up for it while they're at work. That's so, right. Yeah. Cause it's potentially, yeah, it's potentially a deep rabbit hole. That's right. It's like, I could sign up for this now and I could be here in four hours still trying to migrate my site. Right. I'm not saying that would happen with Kinsta, but that's the potential. Yeah. It's a deep rabbit hole. So, you know what, I'm not going to do this right now cause I'm going out for dinner with my wife and I don't want to get stuck. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, um, each industry is yeah, different, but you know, try to advertise, you know, when you think people are going to, or when you see people around for your signups. Um, but yeah, I usually advertise like Monday through Friday kind of for a new blog post. Yeah. Um, and then we have kind of a, like a mini inside list of places we share, you know, we do post it to a Pinterest WordPress board. That's mm-hmm. popular. You know, <laughs> I do advise, you know, like find the hot spots in each place, you mm-hmm. know, like there's great LinkedIn groups too. Mm-hmm. Like, so we have one or two, um, great, WordPress LinkedIn groups we share to, um, you know, there's tons of Facebook groups that are killing yeah, it. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, those are definitely harder to share to because they're, you know, the admins on those are pretty picky in my yeah, opinion. Yeah. Um, but usually you can find a good one or two in each network that you should at least be like throwing your new post to. I yeah. Think. Awesome. Uh, final question. And this is a bit of a pivot, but I do want people to understand, uh, where you guys sit in the ecosystem. Who is the ideal customer for Keenster hosting? If I said to you, Hey, I can bring you a hundred customers tomorrow, but they need to be a clone of one of your existing customers. Who is that perfect customer? Um, so, you know, so right now, I mean, we, are different in that 
we host um, everyone from starter blogs all the way up to you know Fortune 500 companies. Um, so I would say though a majority of our customers are we work with a lot of agencies, mm -hmm. a lot of WordPress agencies, mm -hmm. a lot of you know um, WordPress developers, um, and then a lot of high traffic sites too. Um, just because how we build our platform is, you know, it has basically auto scaling built in and it's a one click upgrade for each plan and everything's prorated. So like if you want to, we have a lot of clients that upgrade for the holiday season mm. um, and then they downgrade, you know, back in, you know, like January, February, they downgrade again after Christmas and stuff's over. Mm. Um, and it's just a one click thing in our dashboard. So it's really easy for clients to go from, they can mm. grow from the starter plan all the way up to our, enterprise and then we even have custom plans if you go past our enterprise plans mm. um and so a lot of other hosts actually i don't know how if you've gone through this process before but a lot of other hosts actually make you migrate when you start growing too big mm -hmm. they'll want to you know move you to their enterprise plans which are on different machines because they have different architecture for different types of plans yeah we haven't done that we built it to scale from the ground up for every type of plan, which is, is awesome for us and for the users, I think. Got it. Awesome. Um, so those who are listening, where can they learn more about Kinsta? Where's the best place for them to go? And uh, and and how can they recommend Kinsta to their, how can they first of all take it for a spin and then recommend it to their clients? Most of the people listening to this podcast are either running their own WordPress consulting agency or are, or are in the process of starting that. So where's the best place for them to take it for a spin and then recommend it to their clients? Yeah. So yeah, you can go to, you know, keensta.com, um, check out our site. Um, you know, I, 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 you know, always say check out our blog too. I, cause I pour my heart into that, uh, for sure. So see if I, I hopefully you'll find something useful on there too. Um, and then, you know, you can find me on Twitter, um, at Brian Lee Jackson. Um, I, I literally live on Twitter. Um, I love Twitter for some reason I'm obsessed with it. So I love chatting with people on there. Um, or, you know, feel free to DM me too. It's, I'm, it's my DMS are open. Um, so, um, if you want to take us for a spin while this is also a little different, we don't have trial accounts. Mm -hmm. Um, but we do have a 30 day money back guarantee with no long-term contracts. So, hmm. Um, we've never liked the idea of trial accounts because it just introduces all sorts of yeah. spam and people that aren't serious. Like we want yeah. to, we really think of people like we want to grow with your business. Mm -hmm. um, and um, so we want to, you know, treat you like kind of like a partner with us as mm -hmm. we grow. Yeah. Um, and so, um, yeah, 30 day money back guarantee. Um, no questions asked if you want your money back. Um but I don't think you will. Our our churn rate is you know, under 5%. I yeah. think you'll fall in love with us. I, I truly do um, because we are truly doing something different. Um, and then you know, for agencies and developers and stuff like that, we even do have an affiliate plan that they even can take advantage of. Um, and you know, we have a reoccurring 10% commission lifetime, uh, which is also different than a lot of other competitors. Mm. Um, most just do one-time bonuses. Yeah. And we have a we have a bonus plus the ten percent. So there's actually a lot of people earning a crazy amount of passive income with us right now, like mm. a lot. So and part of that is, you know, once people sign up for us, they they don't leave. And so you can actually earn a lot of money with us. Um and um I always, you know, I'm also affiliate marketer myself because I have another blog I personally blog on. And so, you know, I always like to recommend you know, tools and products that I, I use, not anything else. And so I feel like we've created something that, you know, you can be proud to actually say, hey, this is a great company. You know, I, I recommend them for hosting, you know, you know, click on my link and you can go feel free to sign up. Awesome. And then the relationship is is directly between the client and Kinsta. So all the, you guys handle all the support, the developer is basically just earning a commission for recommending it. Exactly. Yeah. And we have, you know, all sorts of, we have multi-user permissions in, in there and you can transfer, um, the ownership of companies. So it's really easy to work with clients. Like say if, you know, you know, different agencies work differently, you know, sometimes they'll, you know, tell their client, Hey, go sign up for Keensta because they want their client to do the billing with us. Yeah. And then they add permissions for the agency to just manage their WordPress site and Got all it. the, you know, login and all that stuff on their site themselves. Got it. Um, so yeah, there's a couple of different ways you can handle that permission stuff with us. Awesome. Kinsta is K-I-N-S-T-A dot com. That's uh, the spelling. That's correct, isn't it? Yeah. 
Yep. Yep. K I N S T A dot com. Go check it out. Um, and also, just a quick little shout out to our friend Sujan Patel. Uh, if you're listening, Sujan, and we're going to tag you in and make sure you do listen. Brian is wearing a Mail Shake t shirt. I'm a huge fan of Mail yeah. Shake. It's awesome. Yep. Love it. Uh, but don't go and check out Mail Shake. Check out kinster.com instead hey uh brian also one of the best fitting shirts i've ever had just is that right there you go <laughs> yeah uh, well, they, and they, they, i tell you dude like swag t-shirts are hit and miss aren't they i've had so many swag t-shirts yeah. over the year that like well now i'm just throwing that to the wife as a nighty because it's just like a oversized hessian sack uh, yeah. yeah yeah um i'm a scrawny dude so like yeah. it, it's really hard to find a good shirt so yeah, yeah i was i was excited to have it awesome um cool hey thank you so much for being a part of this this has been epic it's been a little bit longer than our usual podcast but it's been worth every minute and uh, it's been fantastic to finally catch up with you and get inside your head and understand how it all works uh, and kudos to what you're doing over there because I'm seeing you guys everywhere at the moment and I've heard nothing but good things and people in our Facebook groups raving about you so keep up the good work thanks for being a part of the show and all the best for the growth of Kinsta Awesome. Thanks for having me. There you go, folks. There's another episode of the WP Elevation podcast. If you like the show and you know people that are other people that would enjoy this show who are either starting or growing their own WordPress agency or freelance business, please share it, subscribe, leave us a review and a rating over at iTunes. WPElevation.com slash iTunes will get you there. And check us out on YouTube and Facebook and subscribe there and get notified about when we go live, when we do our live shows and when we broadcast our podcast. I look forward to speaking with you again on the podcast very soon. Until then, I'm Troy Dean. Go Elevate.